Hi everyone, I've got the office window and door open today because it's really hot in here. It's 32 degrees and uh, I'm not used to that sort of temperature. Um, so, with that in mind, um, you may be able to hear a lot more noise than you usually would. Um, up to now, since trying to rehearse this video, if you like, I've heard uh, a police car, uh, an aeroplane, because there's a factory near my house, and also a thunderstorm. I'm hoping this one's not going to be too bad. Anyway, let's get on with it. So this is about the solar um, project. So I don't know if you remember, but in the end there were three boards. There's this board, um, which is the uh, power control board, if you like, and there are another two boards. Anyway, this board's okay, it works, but it doesn't look very good, does it? So anyway, there's a company called PCB GoGo and they kindly offered to make the board for me. I had to create it in uh, DesignSpark and then send them the design and they made it for me and here it is and it looks very good so I'd just like to say thank you for that board. Um, this actually isn't the latest revision but regardless um, only the aesthetics have changed really. So um, I'm going to start soldering this up and maybe I can tell you a few things about it as I'm doing it but maybe not I don't know. Uh, so let's start with <coughs> desoldering. So I want to desolder this relay because I'd like to keep it So all the stuff I wanted to desolder I've now got, so now I can start soldering up the board. So maybe it'd be an idea to check the um you know the pinout for these, maybe. Let's make sure that I won't have to change the uh, uh the orientation of them. So I'll just check that on my phone. So it's called TP no TIP forty one C. So I'll just check TIP forty one C. Okay, I've just checked using my phone and it appears to be correct. So I might as well solder these on. Solder them onto the new board. Where's my solder? There it is. Yeah, so when I designed it, I designed it with these big uh, pads here, and um, yeah, there was no problem with it uh, coming to create it. The new, they didn't say anything that uh, they were too big or anything like that, which I suppose makes sense. Um, so you can have the board however you want it, really. Anyway, so there's the TIP uh, transistors. Now I suppose I put the other one in, which which will probably have the same pinout BCE so I just put that in there it's a lot smaller though as you can see so yeah these are for switching the uh, contactors and relay this particular uh, transistor is for the relay and the contactor ones are a bit bigger because they uh, consume more current or more current goes through them so so I've got the transistors in place right so what's next the contactors uh, one of these so let's put that in 
what is going on here? Something's not going in. There we go. So I could do some of that blue tack, but it's always missing, you know. I have to get it to hold like that. Okay. Let's have a look at that again now. Yep, that's good. So next is the relay. Proving to be a bit difficult. I think it's because the uh, pin alignment isn't quite perfect. Yeah. Anyway, it is, it is going in, so. There we go. So the relay next, and the relay goes to the inverter, which I um, I fiddled about with. I don't know if you remember, but I fiddled about with so I could put my own switch on it as well as the remote. I actually hacked into the remote to find out how the inverter switched on. Whoops, and we sold the wrong thing then. So that's the, the relay on. <coughs> this is for the inverter here, which is a little bit difficult to get in. What's going on with that? There we go. Let's hold that in. <coughs> and now the resistors, which were, were they 1K? Where's that other? Oops. Where's that? Uh, here it is. Oh no. So what have we got here? We've got brown, black, red. So that's one, zero, two. So it's one K. One K. So they're one K, aren't they? Yeah. So how many of these do I need? Four. Is that right? For some reason I've only got three on this one. Why have I only got three? Oh, no, no, no. One's for a diode. Okay, so I've added a new component. So th we need three of these. One, two, three. Three, three of these resistors. Let's get these resistors in. And the diode, the diode's a new thing. Uh, it's because you're supposed to have a diode with a um, with a coil, which basically wastes. You know, when you switch the coil off, the energy has got to go somewhere back out of the coil. So I need to go and get a diode now. Diode. Um, diode. <coughs> and it doesn't matter exactly which diode. I'm not that worried about that. Um, I don't know what this is, it's just a cheap one. It'll be one of those uh, 4007s or whatever it's called. Okay, if 5 volts comes through here and it goes through the diode straight to the transistor, then basically we're putting it in parallel with the coil, so it'll go through the diode and through the coil at the same time, providing the switch was um, you know, closed. So it can't go that way, it's got to go the other way. So we want to put it that way, like that. Okay. So I'll just solder this diode in place. And snip it. So that's the board finished, and um, it looks good. And I hope it, I hope it's going to work fully, and there are no uh, mistakes or anything. But I just thought I'd mention about this diode. 
you don't usually see me putting diodes uh, next to coils and uh, relays and whatever else and that's because usually I'm just testing things out and testing theory of something or, or whatever I'm not really thinking long term but the reason I put a, a diode in here is to protect the rest of the circuit I'll have to explain some paper um, so if we have a coil so let's say we have a coil and we have a battery um, let's say a simple battery um, and we power the coil so we have power coming through here across this circuit here and then into the coil and down here at this stage here when we switch it on there's no switch here but let's say we just connect the battery what would happen is um, electrons won't flow through there straight away although towards it more, it's more or less straight away but in terms of physics it's actually not straight away there's a tiny delay and the reason is is because this coil has to get charged up so a magnetic field builds up around this coil here and up and up over, over a few, uh, millisecond or less builds up around there and when that's full of um, magnet electromagnetic charge or magnetic charge then it continues its path around the rest of the circuit but um, but then what happens when we switch it off well when we switch it off say if I was to cut the wire here so now it's an open circuit um, would, electric uh, would electricity still flow it would it would because what would happen is nothing would flow here in this piece of wire here but remember that we've got this magnetic energy stored in here so what would happen is this would collapse this would collapse over a millisecond or less and electrical energy would still try to go through here so this would collapse and it would induce a current down here so if we were to cut the wire this would need to go somewhere so this energy that was previously magnetic energy would turn back into electromagnetic energy or electrical energy and it would be forced down here and the voltages and amperages can be really high for a tiny amount of time but essentially if we were to do this and split this here it would arc straight across this would arc straight across there um, well that's one common way it can go alternatively depending on the voltage it could force back up here um, so the reason we had a diode is to sort of um, to waste that energy so if I was to add a diode in here let's add a diode and which way does it go? It goes that way. If I was to add a diode, turn the power on, um, electrical energy doesn't go through here because it's, it's reverse biased, it can't go through the diode that way. Um, it can only go through here. And potentially it could go back through here, but it wouldn't need to do that because the resistance here is less. So in a normal circuit, in a normal function, it would go this way. However, if we were to split there, what would happen now? there's a very low resistance path across here so if we were to cut this here what would happen is that this energy here, this magnetic energy would still go down here but it, this time it would go down here instead it would go through the diode through there, through there, through there and back through the coil and it would keep going and going and going and going and going round and round and round and round until it was wasted and each, each time um, uh, the electrons move it wastes so there's actually waste here it's not a great deal but there's, it's enough waste and going through the, co the coil again is waste so adding a diode wastes that magnetic energy instead of burning through a circuit or arcing across something which it shouldn't anyway so that's why I did the diode it's called um, a flyback diode and so, or some people call it something else um, uh, something to do with wheel I don't know um, but I call it a flyback diode. Anyway, so that's why I added the diode. So, back to the board. Uh, there it is. I'd like to test it out, but I unfortunately can't at the moment. Um, and not until the other boards are done, because um, I've actually stripped it all down. Stripped it out completely. Um, which I guess I regret now, but whatever. So, um, there's the first board. I um, hope you enjoyed the video, and as usual, thanks for watching. Bye!